All right, in this short video, I wanted to go through the math that we do in order to get our expressions for charge and current in RC circuits, both when we have an RC circuit where we're charging the capacitor and then the RC circuit where we're discharging the capacitor. So this is something I wanted to show you how we get there. We're gonna see these expressions in class, but I wasn't gonna go through all the math in class. All right, so our first case is we're gonna charge our capacitor. The way that we do this is we set up a, a circuit that has a battery, a resistor, and a capacitor. Everything is in series. Now, if we would go around the loop here, we can use um, one of Kirchhoff's loop rules where we talk about the potential rises and drops as we go around the circuit. So we start off at the battery and we have a positive potential difference. We're gonna just call that the EMF of the battery. Then we go through the resistor. The potential drop, according to Ohm's law, is the current times the resistance. And then the capacitor has a potential difference of it across of Q over C. And then we get back to the beginning and we've closed our loop and all those things have to add up to be zero. Just important things to note here is um, I use little q right here to represent the fact that the charge on the capacitor is constantly changing. And so the little q just indicates whatever the value happens to be at that instant in time. Um, and this whole expression for potential comes from the idea that our definition of capacitance is that it's equal to the charge over the voltage. So if we rearrange that to find the potential drop across the capacitor, we would have the expression that you see circled here. Now this ends up giving us a differential equation. It's not obvious at first, but if we use the definition of what current is, is it's the derivative of charge with respect to time. We start to see that maybe this could be a differential equation. And you might say, well, I don't know how to solve a differential equation. Um, that's okay. You actually do know how to do this one. I'll show you how you could do it. We're just going to integrate the expression. It actually ends up not being that bad. So the first thing I have to do is I have to do what I call separation of variables. My two variables that I'm working with here are charge and time. And so I want everything involving time on one side and everything involving Q or charge on the other side. That's how we separate our variables. So I'm gonna do E minus Q over C is equal to DQ DT times R. And yes, I know, I haven't separated my variables yet. Um, I'm going to divide both sides by R. On the left-hand side, I'm going to find a common denominator of RC. And now I can actually get to the point where I'm going to separate my variables. I'm gonna multiply both sides by DT, and then I'm gonna divide by this value. And so now you can see that what I've done is I have separated my variables. All my T things are over here and all my charge things are over here. Now I'm going to do one more thing that might not have been as obvious, um, but I'm familiar with this expression. I'm going to divide both sides by a negative one or multiply both sides by a minus one. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna make it a lot easier for me to integrate both sides. Um, because this is gonna have the form, the right-hand side has the form of du over u, um, and the left-hand side is pretty easy to integrate. So the right-hand side I'm integrating over charge, 
my charge starts at zero and just goes to some value. I'm going to just call Q again. I started at time zero and I'm going to go to some time T. And so we're going to just integrate both of these expressions. On the left hand side, I just get On the left hand side, I get minus t over rc. And on the left hand side, uh, right hand side, sorry, I get the natural log of q minus ec. And I have to evaluate it at my ending point and my starting point. So this is going to look like minus t over rc equals the natural log of q minus ce over minus ce. And um, that was just um, evaluating at both sides and then saying that the subtraction of the natural log is the same thing as taking the natural log of the two terms divided by each other. I'm also going to use the fact of what the definition of the natural log is here, and it says e to the minus t over rc is equal to q minus ce over minus ce. All right, so we've done that so far. Let's um, go to the next page so we have a little bit more room. So we started with this expression. I'm going to try to simplify it. What I really want to get is I want to get q as a function of time. You know, what does the charge look like as a function of time? So I just have to rearrange this a little till I can solve for Q. So I did a lot of rearranging, and what I want you to notice is that um, the capacitance times the EMF of the battery actually gives the maximum charge that our capacitor can hold. That's going to occur when all the potential difference is across the capacitor. So when here the delta V of this is equal to that of the battery, because the delta V across the resistor is going to be zero, because at this point the current is zero. And that's when we're going to talk about how the current and the voltage changes over time. And we'll do more of that qualitative expression in, um, in class. But the charge is, um, you know, just kind of growing towards a maximum value. That's what this function looks like. In a slide or two, we'll actually see what it looks like um, in terms of a graph. So this is how the charge behaves as a function of time while I charge the capacitor. If I want to know what the current looks like as a function of time, I want to take the derivative of this expression with respect to time. And so the first term of this is just Q, and so that's a constant. I take the derivative of that, I get zero. And then I have um, minus Q e to the minus t over rc, and then the derivative of the exponent is minus 1 over rc. And so this is actually equal to my, um, plus q over rc, and this times e to the minus t over rc. This term, well, right here, these two actually equals the potential difference across the capacitor or the battery, so this can be written as E over R, E to the minus T over RC. Um, in both of these expressions, you might notice that there's a term RC that keeps appearing, and we're going to call 
that RC we can also call tau, which is the time constant. And what that does is it gives you a sense of how quickly the capacitor charges up and also how quickly the charge and the current changes as the charging of the capacitor occurs. Um, so this is what I wanted to show you I, um, in terms of charging the capacitor. Um, these are the graphs for the current and the charge. Again, just to remind you, the charge look like this, Q times 1 minus E to the minus T over RC. And so you can see that what happens is there's um, this maximum charge, again, was equal to the capacitance times the EMF of the battery. And so you can see here in this graph, there's this maximum value equal to this that the, cur the charge is approaching over time because as this, as this T is getting bigger, I'm subtracting a smaller and smaller value from Q and that's why it gets closer and closer. Our current as a function of time ended up to look like E over R, E to the minus T over RC. This is just something that's dropping off um, exponentially as the um, time increases. It starts at some maximum value equal to the current when in the, all the potential is across the resistor. And then as the resistor loses its potential difference because the current's decreasing, and also the potential difference across the capacitor is growing. And so these are the expressions for charging a capacitor and how we get them. Then the next thing that we want to look at is what happens when we discharge the capacitor. So, so when we discharge the capacitor, we take the battery out of it and we start with our capacitor charged up. So the opposite situation that we just looked at, our capacitor started with essentially no charge on it, which would grow as we went on. But here, um, no battery, so maybe let's just make note of that. And if we do a loop around here, we have the potential difference across the resistor, which is equal to IR. And then we also have the potential difference across the capacitor, which is equal to Q over C. And these two things add up to be zero. Um, the current can be written as the derivative of charge with respect to time. And we're going to do the same thing that we did last time, where we wanted to solve this differential equation by separating variables. So I'm just going to start simply. And I'm going to divide by R. And now I want to get Q's on one side and T's on the other. And this one is a little bit simpler. We still have this natural log as our solution, but um, it's not as weird. So I start at T equals zero and integrate to some time T. Um, my charge actually started with the capacitor fully charged and we're going to go to some lesser charge, which is unknown, which is little q. And so um, we're gonna just say when we integrate this, we get the natural log of Q evaluated at big Q and little q, and we get on the right-hand side minus T over RC. So I'm gonna just go to the next page where I have a little bit more room. Let's go, oh, sorry. And so we get the natural log of little q over big Q. And again, our definition of natural log leaves us with e to the minus t over rc equals little q over big Q. And little q as a function of time is equal to big Q e to the minus t 
over RC. And this kind of makes sense. You know, we sort of start off with the maximum charge and it's just falling off as time goes on. We're discharging the capacitor. It makes total sense. If we want to find the current, we take the derivative of this. And what I did there is um, the derivative of e to the minus t over rc is e to the minus t over rc. And then I take the derivative of that exponent of e, which is minus 1 over rc. So if I kind of try to simplify this a little bit, um, the Q over the C can be written as E. Um, but it's not always, sometimes it's left as just the Q over RC. And again, here we can look at our expressions for a discharging capacitor we see the charge just exponentially drops off. Um, our current actually is negative, and so um, that represents the fact that it travels in the opposite direction than it did when it was charging up the capacitor. And so it does exponentially um, approach the final value of zero, but it does it from the negative side. And so these are the expressions we're gonna look at for our um, RC circuits, we're going to work with them, but this just gives you a chance to see how we arrived at those using pretty simple calculus.